Last year, I was the first to leak pictures of NVIDIA's desktop Ampere A6000 graphics card. And then, of course, early this year, I leaked pictures of Intel's early desktop Alchemist engineering samples. These were the flagship 512 execution unit models, but they were barely operational at this point, in all honesty. And... Yeah, both of these leaks required a decent amount of risk from some of my sources. And so, correspondingly, I was extra sensitive and patient with the pictures. You see, I actually decided to sit on them for months and wait for some of my sources, either within NVIDIA for the A6000 or for within Intel for the Alchemist cards to tell me they had seen that design before, either in some PowerPoint, in passing, in person. I had to have confirmation that the people I was getting these pictures from weren't the only people to see it so that, well, so that it couldn't be easily traced back to where these leaks came from. And honestly, as time goes on, it's becoming riskier and riskier to get pictures outside of these companies, AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA. And so, well, I don't know, though. I've actually known roughly what the reference cooler for the final Desktop Alchemist flagship card will look like for a while. But how would I do this? How would I find a way to show a reference card without as much sensitivity and risk, without requiring so many redactions to the picture to make sure there isn't anything identifiable on it that can be traced back to the source? Hmm. What if I just used another method of rendering what they look like? Yeah, that's what I did. And it's interesting, actually, before I show you them, when I first saw that engineering sample early this year for DG2, I assumed it was just some off-brand cooler Intel was sourcing for early testing. But actually, Ycry at Video Cards pointed out something very apt about a month ago, which is that that teaser Intel did with drones for a desktop art card, the layout of it was eerily similar to that engineering sample I leaked. And so, yeah, when I saw that, I was like, ooh, yeah, no, that probably is just the first step in what the final reference card will look like. And, well, Rycry, you have some new pictures you can put at the bottom of your XE articles from now on. And I'm going to show you more of those info about the release date and everything else I have been able to glean about XE over the past couple of weeks. But first, an ad from a sponsor. Hmm. No. Oh, time to send some nudes. No. Noodles, Reese. I am proud to say that Vite Ramen is a sponsor of Moore's Law's Dead. The Vite Ramen Company is an American company that pays its workers fair wages and engineered a tasty, healthy, and cheap meal that you can cook in less than five minutes. So if you're busy, hungry, or just looking for a pre-made meal that isn't expensive, get some nudes sent to you. Click the link in the description and use the code BROKENSILICON to save 10% on your order. This helps me, this saves you money, and this supports a good company. Buy Vite Ramen today. Okay, so before I get into the pictures, I want to make a few disclaimers about them up front. What you're about to see should be very, very close to a current reference design. But technically, I cannot promise things like every little screw and the exact I.O. vent placement and design won't change a little. Additionally, I can't promise this isn't just one of several finalists they are considering. I have heard of other designs being tested, but honestly, and everyone I've talked to agrees with me on this, this is almost certainly what the final design will roughly look like. So again, I guess what I want to be say is, I can technically only promise this is a current design being tested that's near final. There will probably be some little changes from it before launch, but this, this gives you an idea of what to expect, I think. Uh, and, and it looks really cool either way. So without further ado, this is Intel 512 Execution Unit XE. This is Desktop Alchemist. And, well, can you guess how I got you these pictures? I, I've been aware of the rough look of Top XE for a while, but it was too risky to take pictures of these things. So I actually worked with several sources on literally just providing input from memory on how it looks. Then 
I looked at the engineering sample pictures that I actually had for a point of reference and worked with a contact of mine who owns an A6000 to model and render what the reference cooler looks like. He would prefer to remain anonymous for now, but actually I'm hoping he can become another member of the Moore's Laws Dead Teen if the Patreon grows enough. I would like to be capable of doing projects like this for you guys more regularly because, well, it's, it's, on, it's really cool, but it is a lot of work and... I think that people put this much work into it deserve to be paid for it. But anyways, though, yeah, so that's how this was done. Painstakingly talking to sources out of memory, working with a person modeling it. This is what we got to. An HDMI, three display ports, dual fans, and a layout eerily similar to that engineering sample. Just much flashier this time. And in terms of what we can learn from this reference cooler, I would say not that much more than what I've already confirmed in my Intel arc leaks, right? I mean, we already know it's around 230 watts and there's your eight pin plus six pin. And it looks like a decent cooler, but not insanely beefy like Ampere. So at least right now, I see very little chance of this using energy remotely close to like a 3080 or something. This is clearly something that uses energy around a 3070 and that should be expected given that it is well about the same die size as a 3070 on a a far superior node. TSMC 6 nanometer, as I confirmed a year ago, by the way, not Samsung's 8 nanometer. And speaking of Ampere, one thing that I would point out about this cooler that unlike Ampere is it looks like it's, well, built to look nice, but to not be crazy expensive to put together. You know, this looks like a cooler that's far nicer than what we saw on the cheap stuff from 10 years ago, but it doesn't look like something that you can't keep below $600 for a reasonable price. And so this is just another point in my argument, in addition to everything I've been told from my sources, that Intel is building the top cards to be able to be priced to sell at reasonable prices for their performance, at least relative to what's going on with everyone else right now. But yeah, so this is the top flagship model, and this cooler should be used for both the flagship 512 full uncut die and then also the cut down model. The one that I confirmed is most likely 384 execution units, or 448. Uh, to be honest, upon reflection, I just, I know both are being tested right now, both 384 and 448, and these are not their own dies. These are cut down from the top die. At least as of now, that's how they're being provided for testing cut down models from the top die, not its own, you know, smaller 384 execution unit die. I think they probably both exist, both the 384 and the 448. I would assume there's going to be at least three different you know, execution unit count models from the top die since it's a high-end die that's somewhat large. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if one of them is like either a 384 or 448 mobile card with the full bus and eight gigabytes of RAM. And then another one is cut down to 192 bit with 12 gigabytes for desktop to compete directly between the 3060 and the 6700 XT. That's what makes the most sense to me. Outside of talking about the flagship, I should have a lot more about the 128 execution unit model, the one that's around a 1650 or 1650 super. I should have more info pretty soon, but yeah, I'll say that the specs aren't as concrete on that model. I know there's some debate going on about what bus it actually has. And, well, look, we're still honestly about a half a year away from this thing launching, which, yeah, I guess actually on that note, let me confirm. I'm now told with almost 100% confidence that the desktop XE will probably not launch till quarter two. And that the laptop models, though, should launch before that. At least some of them should. And, and in fact, I'm also told this isn't really because of drivers, right? I, I'm honestly told that the drivers are rapidly improving, like that every day when you check, the file size for the drivers is way larger. There's way better support, way less bugs. They have half a year to get there, and I think they'll get there with decent drivers. The problem is the supply chain. Right now, there are a lot of disruptions. I've heard from some contacts in East Asia about COVID outbreaks at some factories that supply some of the parts that go into these products products. So that's an issue. And then there's also been massive power outages across China recently. And and look, I know this isn't next year, but right now Intel's just worried about if disruptions in the supply chain will force the desktop launch back a bit. But they're going to try to have it as close to the beginning of 2022 as they can. And that's that's what I would confirm. 
Uh, oh, and one more thing. A word on the naming scheme. I'm not technically 100% sure of the validity of this leak here, but I know Momo has a pretty good track record. And speaking to some people, I believe this is almost certainly legit as well. And that means that as of now, it seems like Intel is planning to go with a very different naming scheme for Alchemist compared to what Radeon and GeForce are doing. And I like that. I like that they're not just going to go with a name that is confusingly way too similar to their CPUs, AMD. I like this idea of like a lowercase a and then, I don't know, something like 700 or 770 for the top model, 750 for the cut down top die or something. And probably or almost certainly Dan pointed this out on Broken Silicon. Anyone notice that Alchemist Battle Mage? Look, guys, look at this roadmap, A, B, C, D. Instead of going up in number, they're going down in lowercase letters across the alphabet and then adding the model number. I like that. It's different. It's new. I actually do like that piece of the Alchemist branding, assuming it actually pans out. At least right now, that seems to be what Intel is doing. And I guess, you know, one final thing I want to say about the name of Alchemist is... And, and, and I, I, a lot of my sources actually don't think this is going to happen. And I, huge disclaimer, this is speculation by me. But, you know, has anyone forgot who's in charge right now of making these graphics cards? Raja Kadori. How did he name Vega? Oh, yeah. Vega 64. Vega 56. And there's three numbers. I don't think people should discount that they may go with A512, A448. A384. And I personally wouldn't mind that. That makes it very easy to know what product you're buying if you're technically minded. But I don't know. Most of my sources think that that's just too techy for the mainstream. And Intel's a very mainstream brand. So I don't know. I, I'm not saying I'm sure that will happen. But I don't think people should rule out that Raja may just do Raja's naming scheme again. And um, yeah, that just about does it for this video. It's not as long as my other arc leaks, but it didn't take as long to tell you what I know. What I can tell you, though, is the amount of time that went into getting this information and working with someone on rendering it. Well, that it was still a lot of work. So I hope you appreciated getting this peek at what the reference cooler is likely to look like in quarter two of next year when Desktop XE launches. And otherwise, I guess, yeah, you know, please remember that more leaks will be coming out about Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, and even PlayStation and Xbox soon. So don't forget to subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss those upcoming leaks and podcasts. And if you enjoy this content, remember that it only happens because of the patrons and they get ad-free early access to Broken Silicon and exclusive podcasts like Die Shrink, the ability to ask me and guest questions. We have the creator of Silicon Lottery, who's going to do a whole interview about why he created the website and why it's now being closed coming up. And we also have another guest coming up, someone who works in AI, who's going to talk about neural engines with me. So again, guys, don't miss those resources. Don't miss an opportunity to support content that you love. And of course, as always, for everyone else, no matter what, thank you for watching.